2023 Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo coming down the road. I'm Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. This is one of five performance levels and three body styles that you can order for your Taycan in 2023. This particular tester sits somewhere right in the middle of the product lineup. And in this video, we're gonna learn all about it. These impressions are based on about 1,000 kilometers of rural back roads and highway driving, with fall temperatures in Northern Ontario between 0 and 12 degrees Celsius for the bulk of my test week. This unit runs the 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, feeding power to a front motor, as well as a more powerful rear motor equipped with a two-speed transmission. Output is rated at 590 horsepower and 627 pounds of torque with electric all-wheel drive enabling high grip launches, good for zero to 100 kilometers an hour and a tick over three and a half. So here's what potential shoppers can expect. All right, so let's get you right up close with some of my favorite details and touches in here. We'll start with the gear shifter. Uh, we just push the brake, this is park, push down for drive, push up for reverse and push up about halfway there uh, for neutral. So we've got a power button here on the left uh, to turn the Taycan on and off. You don't have to use this, it powers up automatically uh, when you get into the seat and powers off automatically when you get out and walk away. If you do want to manually control whether the car is on or off, uh, you can use that power button over there on the left hand side of course. So first the design of this, uh, nice kind of widescreen effect here. If I move the camera over this way, I think you can see that's got a heck of a curve to it. Almost reminds me of like a high-end gaming monitor in terms of that curved viewing angle there. These are actually buttons here on the right so we can control the uh, traction control system, the suspension, the ride height, or assign a favorite function to that button there. And also over here on the left, uh, it's push button to control the lighting system. Central display screen in the last two minutes has collected some dust. Let me clean that up for you. So pardon my cleaning, uh, but I do want you to have a really good look at this. Let me get you right up close in there for a look at the graphics. Easy access to your climate control and other supplemental functions. Uh, this top row of buttons here just changes the context of what's up on the upper screen. So we're in Android Auto right now. If I want my car settings, I press that and there they are. If I want my phone, I press that. Navigation and so on. Now be warned, uh, you can see here just one touch and I've already managed to uh, smudge things up there pretty good. So I can trace my thumb or my finger over here and manipulate uh, what's going on up there with the screen. You can of course also just work the screen if you prefer, but it's always nice to have choices. We have the ability to control a whole bunch of things about how the Taycan drives. So we can select the drive mode that we want uh, from this list, range, which is kind of like eco, normal, sport, sport plus, or individual, you can set up yourself. If you like, you can control the uh, chassis, the way the Taycan rides between normal, sport, and sport plus. The chassis height, if you like, uh, low, lowered, regular, or lift, depending on what you're trying to get up to. Uh, recuperation, that is regenerative braking, on, off, or auto, depending on whether you want the car to coast when you release the pedal or not. I like that off. And electric sport sound, off or on. We can also control the drive mode very quickly from this little dial here on the steering wheel. Uh, a couple quick things to show you outside. Let's take a look at the frunk, the trunk, and the charging ports. There is a large costco size camping chair in there for reference. Folding seats at the back, little grocery hooks here and here, which can fold out of the way, and those are super handy. Charge port on this side. Just press up underneath this, generally. There we go. To close that, we just push up on there, touch sensitive, and away it goes. Same deal on the other side here, just a little touch uh, onto that thing. Opens up, we can see the additional port down here. We'd flip this open uh, for fast charging or not. And again, to close that, uh, a little touch. And away it goes. Check this out. Because of course there's no engine up here, got a little bit of extra storage. You're right down in there. Got a little farther away so you can see. Um, not a gigantic frunk given the size of the front end of this car. 
but definitely some room for your travel charger, gym bag cooler, maybe some camping gear, and so on. It's like having his and her trunks for a road trip. The Taycan GTS Sport Turismo sets spirited drivers up with a great place to take in a highway drive. The seats look like something out of an exotic race car, but adjustable bolsters mean they can be relaxed at the push of a button. You're the boss of how much grip these thick and sturdy seats give your backside. The adaptive suspension is specially tuned for GTS duty with a keen focus on increasing response and the driver to road connection. Ride height is self-regulated and can be lifted and lowered on command with the touch of a button. The Porsche Active Suspension Management or PASM PASM system also live streams road surface data to the clever shocks which can adjust themselves in real time for a more comfortable ride and near total reduction in unwanted body motions after hitting a bump in the road. This technology is designed to help ensure more flattering and stable handling in a high-speed setting, but it also has the ability to take some of the sport suspension bite out of the vehicle's ride. On the smooth highways connecting central Ontario to areas further north, expect a sporty glide down the road. If you're coming here from a luxury sport sedan that leans more heavily to the sporty side of the equation, you'll likely appreciate the dense, solid cruise. And there's just enough feedback from the suspension to keep things engaging. Expect slightly elevated road and tire noise levels especially on rougher or coarser pavement surfaces, that's par for the course, given this machine's sporting intentions and big sticky P0 tires. Even at a good clip, there's rarely a need to raise your voice for a conversation or phone call. Still, if a whisper quiet drive is the priority for your next six-figure purchase, you do have better options. As road surface conditions deteriorate in areas further north, noise levels increase although the suspension continues to help smooth and ease the drive, even when the going gets rougher. Simply, in back roads driving, you'll often hear the road surface more than you'll feel it. So all said, I think shoppers can expect to find a ride that's spirited and very well sorted, though my biggest smiles came from the steering. It's masterfully tuned and directed by a thin-rimmed suede wheel. At speed, it is remarkably stable and locked on, given how fast and responsive it is. At lower speeds around town and in parking lots, the steering feel is adapted for easier maneuverability, and four-wheel steering on my tester helps shrink the turning circle to make this lengthy road rocket feel smaller than it is when it comes time to park. Both highway trips in my tester required a brief charging stop to make it to my destinations. The cool fall temperatures gave me a range of about 390 kilometers per charge. A quick stop at one relatively slow fast charger brought the battery from 37 to 90 percent in 20 minutes, roughly the time it takes me to have a washroom break, pick up a coffee, and eat a snack. Other chargers can refill the Tycon's battery even faster. The cooler fall temperatures tend to reduce the range of an EV and increase the time it can take to charge the battery, and your results will vary depending on various factors. Of course, the majority of drivers will charge almost exclusively at home. That was the case on my test drive. The level 2 charger in my driveway could totally refill an empty battery overnight, and each morning I arrive to a full charge in a preheated cabin with clear windows. If you forget to precondition the cabin, heat arrives in just a few seconds when activated on a cold morning, there's no engine to warm up, and the steering wheel and heated seats get fiery hot within a minute. By the way, this tester was the first EV I've ever driven with a charge port on each side of the car, which can help make charging even more convenient. And if my math's right, driving 100 kilometers in this car cost me about $2.10 worth of off-peak hydro. Not bad at all for something with facelift on-demand acceleration. Obviously, this car is a rocket. At traffic lights, a quick stab on the rightmost pedal will see you halfway to the next intersection before everyone else's torque converter is even meshed up. At any speed, and at any time, a prod on the throttle produces an immediate and startling shove into your seat that just grows stronger and stronger the deeper you get into the pedal. Performance sounds can even be turned on or off to augment the experience. All right, so have a listen here, some full throttle and no augmented uh, sport sound. <laughs> the acceleration almost makes your eyes dizzy, but no sound. And we can turn the electric sport sound on, just one button press here. probably hear that already a little bit. That is pretty cool. 
passing and merging become point and shoot. Even the steepest hills cause no change to cruising speed and no lugging, hesitation or changing of gears as expected with a gasoline engine. The endless well of electric torque is fun at the traffic lights but also helps smooth out the highway drive considerably over hilly terrain. So is an electric or gas Porsche right for you? Well, as someone who's been lucky enough to tell a lot of stories about a lot of different Porsches over the years, here's a final thought for you. On one hand, the Taycan makes me miss the rising action sensation to the power curve of the brand's gasoline engines, and the emotional auditory response that those engines create, especially when combined with the lightning speed shifts of the PDK transmission. In the Taycan, these strong and defining attributes of the Porsche driving experience as I know it are replaced by something new, impossibly quicker throttle response, and the novelty of the noiseless operation required to generate it. At the end of the day, I figure these are just two different ways of doing the same thing, using cutting-edge tech to plaster a grin on the driver's face. Well, thank you for watching. My name's Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe. If you like this video, we've got plenty more like it, so consider hitting the subscribe button down below so you never miss a new upload leaving a like if you learned something new. And until next time, take care and drive safe.